Today we're going to talk about tea and coffee culture in Germany and how you may be surprised by how many Germans actually prefer tea over coffee. And we're also going to be doing an Ostfriesland tea ceremony, at least my best attempt at one. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah and I don't have Kevin with me. <laughs> He's actually working. All the kids are in school and even our Ukrainian family that's staying with us, they're in the next town over getting all registered to be official here in Germany. So the house is empty except for me. So I had to take this opportunity to go ahead and record this for you because I don't know I'm going to have another quiet moment in the house. But as we say at the beginning of every video, we are a family of six with four kids, a cat and a hamster. And we moved from America to Germany in February of 2021, which was a year and two months ago. And we've been sharing all of our travels and adventures with you. So today I wanna to talk to you about the culture of coffee and tea here in Germany. Now, for the longest time, I've thought coffee is king in Germany. I mean, after all, we do have a tradition called Café in Kuchen, whereby in the afternoons, kind of like the English, they have coffee and cake. Now, of course, many Germans are working during the day. I don't think it's practiced during the week very much, but I do know a lot of Germans who do practice this tradition on the weekends, especially on Sundays. I think it's a lovely tradition and it just helps you to sort of have that calm moment during the day and enjoy something really yummy and tasty. Uh, German cakes are delicious. If you're traveling to Germany, definitely you need to go to their bakeries and check out their bread. We have a whole video just on that that you should definitely check out. I give a lot of good facts about German bread and how famous it is and how good it is. But also while you're at those bakeries or go to a konditur, a konditorei, and get some cakes, get some sweet things. Because what we have loved about the sweet things here in Germany is that they are way less sweet than American sweets. So you can have this giant piece of cake and it still just tastes slightly sweet. Uh, and it tastes almost more like a meal sometimes, a sweet meal than a dessert, at least to an American palate, because we're used to very, very sweet things, which of course is not very healthy. So speaking of sweets, we had a whole video we did on our first time as a family trying German Christmas sweets. Many of these things we had never tried before, things like Stollen, Lebkuchen, and Vanilla Kupfel. Uh, we discovered some new things that we had never had before and really enjoyed it. So in that video, I casually threw out a comment about coffee. I love to have these with tea. Um, they, they taste really good with a, a cup of tea. Even though tea is not a thing in Germany though. Cafe, we get coffee here. And then I proceeded to get a ton of comments saying, hey, wait a minute, Germans actually love tea as well. And I was so confused, but you have this tradition called Kaffee and Kuchen. How is tea also popular here? I thought I had this right. So I went and did some research and now I'm finally ready to present it to you. So soon after arriving in Germany, well, I guess six months into it, I bought this beautiful tea set. This is a Bavarian vintage tea set that I got from Etsy and I can link the shop in the description below. I love to support Etsy shop owners because they're small businesses and they're often selling used and handmade items. It's good for the environment. I try to buy locally from Germany, sometimes the Netherlands, sometimes France, but I try to keep it in this general region of Europe and, and in Germany. Anyway, so this is from the 1950s and it's a vintage coffee set. So this goes together. And then I went back on Etsy later and got a teapot so I could also have a proper teapot. I have an inner Oma in me, an inner grandma in me. I have always loved vintage things from the past. I just think they made things so well back then. The quality of detail, the craftsmanship, the materials, everything was so well made. So I like to collect things from the past and I have never owned a proper tea or coffee set before. So this is what you see here. So let's start off with some facts about coffee first. Is coffee king or tea king here in Germany? Well, both are correct and I'm gonna tell you why. So Germany is actually the third largest importer of coffee in the world, only second after the United States and Brazil. 
cool fact. And before the 17th century, hardly anyone in Europe was drinking tea or coffee. It wasn't until they were being imported from South America and India that it started to become a thing in Europe. Before that, the only things people really drunk were water, wine, beer, and of course spirits that they would make at home. So coffee was first introduced to Europe in 1526 when the Turks invaded the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And the first coffee house was actually opened in Venice in 1645. But for Germany, coffee came through the north seaports of, you guessed it, Hamburg, and another seaport, which I had not heard of before, which is called Wuppertal Ronsdorf. And that was in 1673 that coffee was introduced there. And here's a cool linguistic fact for you. So initially when coffee was introduced to Germany, it was written in the English form, coffee. But during the 1700s, the Germans gradually adopted the French word cafe, then slowly changed the spelling to the German word cafe that we know it as today. Between the 17th and 18th centuries, coffee houses began to appear all across Europe, and they were a place where traders, the wealthy, and educated would meet to talk business, current events, and philosophy. Proper coffee was imported from Arab countries, and the poor had to drink fake coffee made from chicory or malt. Tea was also served in these coffee houses and was something only the wealthy could afford to drink. It wasn't until the early 19th century, when slave labor became common, unfortunately, that the prices of tea and coffee became low enough for the poor to also be able to afford these beverages. In 1777, Germany's King Frederick the Great was so against coffee that he attempted to outlaw it in favor of beer. He was afraid that the importation of coffee was costing his kingdom and himself business. So he required all coffee sellers to register with the crown, denying licenses to all but a few friends of the court and employing former soldiers to work as sniffers, roaming the streets to detect any contraband coffee roasters. In a letter he wrote, it is despicable to see how extensive the consumption of coffee is. If this is limited a bit, people will have to get used to beer again. His Royal Majesty was raised eating beer soup, so these people can be brought up nurtured with beer soup. This is much healthier than coffee. I just love this little fact, because it is quite common around the world to associate Germany with beer. And here we see a strong reference to supporting beer over coffee. So here's a fun fact I just had to throw in. The paper coffee filter was invented right here in Germany by a lady named Melita Bentz. She was a housewife from Dresden. Her invention paved the way for her to start the Melita Company that has had its headquarters in Minden in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia since 1929 and today provides employment for over 3,500 people. So now that we've learned a little bit about the coffee culture and coffee history here in Germany, now let's switch over to tea. And I'm really excited to share with you, even though I already have one set, like I said, I have a German Oma in me. I also got a typical tea set from Ostfriesland, from East Frisia, because I just absolutely love the pattern. I think it's beautiful. And we're going to do an Ostfriesland tea ceremony. And I want to share with you about the history of tea in Germany. So when we're referring to caffeinated tea or coffee, coffee is definitely more popular in Germany countrywide than tea. However, herbal teas, especially when it comes to minor illnesses and sicknesses, are very commonly used all across Germany, but I'll get to that a little later. So per capita, Germans drink an average of 28 liters of tea per year and 150 liters of coffee per year. So coffee is definitely king when it comes to the Germany as a whole, but there's one exception, which is East Frisia, the Ostfriesland part of Germany, which is in the Northeast, it's on the sea, and there tea is by far the most popular. So while people in India and the UK are obviously well known for their tea drinking culture and their per capita consumption, the people of East Frisia actually drink more tea per capita than both the UK and India. That's how popular tea is there. So Germany itself ranks 84 on the list worldwide of how much tea is drunk here, with the exception of again, East Frisia. <laughs> the people of East Frisia actually drink more tea per capita than any other region in the world. 
So they are number one. Pretty cool, huh? I know when I've heard about tea culture from around the world, I've never heard of East Frisia. So to give you an idea, as I said before, Germans drink on average 28 liters per capita of tea each year. In the UK, they drink about 200 liters per capita each year. In East Frisia, they drink a whopping 300 liters per capita of tea. So as you can see, there was a strong tea culture in the region of East Frisia. So here are some more fun facts. The Records Institute of Germany states that out of the 475,000 residents of East Frisia, they drink an average of six cups of tea a day. That's a lot. And I know it's black tea, so it's very strong tea. I know if I have any tea or coffee after 2 p.m., I can't sleep at night. My heart is still racing. So how do you guys sleep at night? That's a lot of caffeine. I guess your body just acclimates and gets used to it, or it's in your blood or something, right? So I want to refer back to the cafe and Kuchen culture that the rest of Germany practices. In East Frisia, they like to have waffles with cream on top instead of Kuchen. That's what I read at least. So those of you who are in East Frisia, let me know what you have with your tea in the afternoon. I think waffles with cream on top is an excellent idea and I'll definitely have to try that. Also, I learned that it's rude to walk away from your host or hostess having drunk anything less than three cups of tea so you guys confirm again in the comments below, is that true? Would you say that's true in your home? So in Hamburg, there is a tea association where the quality of tea is tested each year. And even private citizens such as you and I can book a tea sampling ourselves. And it's called the Bunting Tea Museum in Lier. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, tea started to become popular in Germany at around the same time that coffee did, and was also served in those coffee houses. Again, only the rich enjoyed these drinks until slave labor became common. Once World War II started, tea was rationed to only 10 grams, or half an ounce, per person per month. The tea drinkers of East Frisia, however, were afforded an extra tea carton, allowing for increased tea rations. However, for East Frisians, this was still not enough and people got inventive with herbs and sugar, crafting their own tea substitutes. So when it comes to herbal teas, Schwarz tea, or black tea, and Frühstück tea, or food tea, are most popular throughout Germany. Kamillen tea, or chamomile tea, Finchel tea, or fennel tea, Hagebutten tea, rosehip tea, pfefferminz tea or peppermint tea, all making an appearance. So even though coffee is obviously king in Germany, with the exception of East Frisia, <laughs> Herbal teas, as I mentioned earlier, are hugely popular. And I tried to find some facts and figures on this, some statistics, and I couldn't really find anything specific on how much herbal tea is drunk per capita in Germany. But what I've experienced just in the one short year we have lived here, herbal tea does seem to be quite common to treat minor illnesses. So for instance, one time Ella had a little stomach ache and our neighbor, sweet little Irma, uh, we call her our German Oma, we adore her, and she loves Ella. Her and Ella are best little friends, and even when Ella hardly knew any German at all, they were still able to stand outside in the street and communicate and have a little conversation in German. Now, of course, Ella can carry on a good conversation with her in German, but Emer was asking where Ella was, and I said, oh, she's got a stomach ache, she's inside. And Irma said, oh, well, you should be give them peppermint tea. Uh, ginger tea is very good. You know, this was all in German. Ginger tea, ing ingwer tea is very good for their stomachs. But of course, children won't like that. So I suggest maybe some peppermint or spearmint tea. You can just get it down at Edeka or uh, at D DM. And I always have herbal tea on hand. It was something I used a lot in the U.S. because I'm really into natural and herbal remedies for minor illnesses. I find that they work well to help you feel better and maybe get over your cold a little faster. I had already been giving Ella some peppermint tea because in the U.S., most people don't really say, hey, you should go home and drink some tea when you're sick. And then one of the boys had a cold. We had to take him to the doctor. We weren't sure if maybe it was developing into an infection. So we took him to the local, you know, kinder arts, the pediatrician. And he said, oh yeah, there's no, you know, infection or anything. He's going to be fine. Just give him some tea. <laughs> 
just give him some air caltings tea, maybe an air caltings bath, which I did find in a DM. You can get a bottle of like some, some solution to put in the bath. It gives some bubbles and it gives off a wonderful menthol aroma to help when you have a cold. I'm a big believer in taking long soaks in the bathtub when you've got a cold. They make me feel a lot better and also my children as well. And we also drink a lot of tea. So once again, we fit into the German culture here. Uh, I, I guess that's why we just chose to live here and like living here so much. There's so many little things that I was already doing in the U.S. that are seem very ingrained in German culture. And I just think that's so cool. So I don't have any facts and figures on herbal tea consumption. If you have found something, let me know in the comments below. And also tell me in your home, are you grabbing an herbal tea at the first sign of illness? Would you say there is a culture of drinking herbal teas here in Germany to soothe minor illnesses? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. All right, guys, so I was just about to do this tea ceremony and I realized I had no cream. So I had to run to the store really quick in the rain, ran down there literally and ran back. <laughs> so if my hair looks different, blame it on the rain. Anyway, let's get on with our tea ceremony, our Ost Friesland tea ceremony. Again, I preface this with the fact that I am not an expert. This is only the second time I've done this in my entire life. Please refer to the Ostfriesland videos here on YouTube. They're the experts. And better yet, travel to Ostfriesland yourself and have a tea ceremony in a tea house. I plan to do that. We want to take our family there. We've yet to make it to Hamburg. And we definitely want to see Hamburg and the, the seaside up there. It just sounds absolutely lovely. And we really want to take a trip there. So if you're in the East Frisia part of Germany and you're watching this video, why not pause the video now and go get your tea set up and have a tea ceremony along with me. And then you can tell me in the comments below everything I'm doing wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna make some mistakes, but I hope my second attempt will be fairly good and will at least pay homage to your beautiful tea culture. So from what I've learned about the tea ceremony, you need a special spoon. This is your cream spoon. You need tweezers for your sugar. And you need a special kind of sugar, which is basically rock sugar. Uh, in English, we would call it rock sugar or candied sugar. In German, it's Candis Zucker. Okay, so you're gonna need that. And if you can get your hands on one of these lovely sets, tea sets, um, it sure makes the whole experience a lot more special and fun. I really find that taking moments like this, I, as I shared in my Huga video uh, about how to enjoy the winter time in Germany, um, you Germans say that you're notorious for complaining about the weather. I will take no sides on that. <laughs> but I mean, we don't live in a very sunny country, do we? So oftentimes people who live in more rainy, cold countries complain about the weather and rightfully so, it can be difficult. I have found that by practicing Huga in my life, I'm better able to handle the rainy gray days here in Germany. That's one of the reasons I have these beautiful tea sets because they help me in the practice of huga, which is a Danish tradition. And they make drinking your tea or drinking your coffee in the morning or any time of the day just more special. And it makes you feel much more cozy. There is something to be said about having something beautiful to eat or drink off of. It really can make a difference. And you don't have to have an entire set. Like for my tea set, I just got the teapot and the little warmer and the teacup and saucer. So I, I didn't buy the whole set. I didn't need it. So you can do it affordably if you so wish. So let's get on with the tea ceremony. So from what I have learned from different YouTube videos and reading different articles is you start with the sugar first. So you take your tweezers, you grab your rock sugar and you put it in first. Next, you pour your tea. Now, there's many different ways to make your tea and many different kinds of tea. I got this Frisian gold tea at our local Edeka, our local supermarket. Another one that I was told is very popular in Ostfriesland is Darjeeling tea, which obviously is very popular in India and comes from India. A lot of British people like Darjeeling tea as well. Uh, and then I got these special teas from the same shop that I got this tea set, and I'll link to that in the description box below. It's just a little mom and pop shop. 
up in Ostfriesland. So on my Instagram stories, which if you're not already following me there, I share a lot of behind the scenes of our everyday lives living here in Germany. And I sent out a question and said, where should I buy an Ostfriesland tea set? And where do I get Ostfriesland tea? And they recommended this shop that, I, that I'll link in the description box below. So I got some bio fruit tea. Bio fruit tea and then, or I should say organic fruit tea. Uh, and then bio untergarten tea, which sounds like fun. Now I've learned about tea making from English videos. So you can make your tea many different ways. This is a tea bag. You can just buy empty tea bags at stores. They're very cheap. You can put your loose tea in here. And then there's a little stick, which I can't find at the moment, that goes through the middle of the bag and you hang it in your pot and you steep it for about five minutes or so. This works really well if you maybe are gonna be lingering over your tea for a long time and you don't want the herbs steeping in there with the water, which will make your tea stronger and stronger and stronger the more it steeps. That way you can control how long it steeps. You can, of course, use tea bags, though don't tell tea enthusiasts that they don't like to talk about tea bags. <laughs> I am not a tea purist. I drink plenty of tea that's in tea bags and I thoroughly enjoy it. Another option for making my tea, I put hot water from the sink in the teapot to get the teapot warmed up and then I pour it out after about three to five minutes. Then I add about three to five scoops, three to five spoonfuls of whatever tea I'd like if I'm filling up the whole pot and pour hot boiling water over the top of it and let it steep for about five minutes and then serve. So since I'm gonna be drinking this right now, as we're doing the video, I decided to do it this way. So you're going to need a tea strainer if you have the loose leaf tea in here. And I bought this tea strainer also on Etsy and it is from the Netherlands. It has this adorable little windmill at the top. So I just thought that was adorable. I had to have it. So let's get on with our tea ceremony and you guys tell me if I'm doing this properly or not. I do have my little tea warmer with a tea light. Can you see it? Inside to keep my teapot warm. Oh, it's hot. All right, so I pour my tea in. You can hear the rock sugar, the candy sugar already, it's popping. It makes a nice little sound. Now I did the tea ceremony in my Instagram stories a few months ago, and I had quite a few followers from East Frisia saying that they add two or three pieces of rock candy. So there is no right or wrong way, I think, to do this. You do it however suits you. I drink my coffee black and my tea usually black, so, so I don't like a lot of sugar in my tea. So I'm just gonna do one. Now we're gonna take the sugar, and I unfortunately don't have a beautiful creamer to do this with. I may have to go back to this store and buy a creamer cup. For now, I don't have that. So, shake that off. Now we're going to pour in the cream. Now, this is the special part because it's supposed to look like clouds, Vulcan. And what I love about the clouds and how it's supposed to look like clouds is that when you're standing on the shores of East Frisia, looking out over the ocean, you see beautiful clouds over the water and that's what that's supposed to represent. So I think that's just so neat. Now with East Frisian tea, you do not stir it. You don't need a spoon. The whole idea is that the first few sips taste like the cream and the tea. And then as you get towards the bottom, farther and farther down, the tea gets sweeter and sweeter. So I think that's so neat. And yeah, the first taste is creamy, but kind of bitter. You don't taste the sugar. It takes a little bit to get down to the bottom. The one thing I'm missing right now is some waffles with cream on top. Could have gotten some at the store, I suppose, but I didn't. Our family loves to make waffles and we used to make them all the time in the US, but we haven't bought a waffle maker since we moved to Germany. So we need to get on that because we love to eat waffles. We have a really good recipe that I used to use. In fact, I have one on my blog and it's really healthy. It has good quality wheat in it. So it's good for your digestion. It has a lot of protein in it. So I wanna get back to making that recipe. In our family, we do often make pancakes on weekend mornings, and that's a very American thing. We like to make them from scratch. We don't buy them in the store. And I did a whole video on that as well that I'll link in the description box below, maybe put up here too, and where I compare German pancakes or Pfannkuchen 
to American pancakes. German Pfannkuchen are quite thin and you often put things inside of them. Anything from sweet to savory and American pancakes, they stand alone. Uh, you know, they're nice and thick, like kind of cakey and you put syrup and fruit on top. Mmm, now it's getting sweeter. I'm about halfway down the cup and it's tasting sweeter. But that's really nice. You do need the sugar with this tea. I ended up using the Darjeeling tea and I do find that without sugar, it's quite bitter. I can, I can often have fruit tea without sugar in it, but. Mmm. And I can see the rock sugar, the candice. It hasn't even fully dissolved yet. So I'm really not getting all the benefits of the sweetness right now. Mmm, now it's tasting good. I, I do like it with the sugar. Mmm, last sip, tasted good. Nice, nice sugary taste. Not too sugary though. All right guys, so that is the Ostfriesland Tea Ceremony, the East Friesland Tea Ceremony. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little dive into the history of tea and coffee in Germany and the tea and coffee culture here in Germany. And the next time you're visiting Germany, if you're not already from here, make sure to go to a coffee house. Nearly all of the bakeries, if they have space, have a place where you can sit down and have a good cup of coffee or tea. So definitely make sure you try them out as it is a big part of German culture. So thank you guys again so much for watching. We'd love if you'd like and subscribe and do all of those things. It does definitely help our small business here on the internet. All right, guys, you have a great rest of your Sunday and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.